music for a child's heart, body, and mind. Hello, Southernix. Good morning once again. How are we doing today? I really want to believe you enjoyed your weekend. So we are having another mathematics class this morning, and I really want you to pay attention as we take a new topic. So follow me as we take a new topic in mathematics today. Okay, like I told you, we are taking a new topic today, which is Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem, and it is something we use to find the particular side of a right angle triangle. So what is Pythagoras theorem? This is a formula or a theorem used to find a missing side of a right angled triangle. Don't forget why we're dealing with triangles in school. We talk about different types of triangle, like what? The obtuse, the acute angled triangle, like what? Other type of triangle did we talk about? We also talk about what? Equivalent triangle, scaling triangle, and then we also mentioned right angled triangle. And what is right angle triangle? Right angle triangle is simply a triangle whose one of the three angles is a right angle. Don't forget the value of a right angle. Right angle simply means 90 degrees. So any triangle whose one of the three angles is 90 degrees is a right angled triangle. So Pythagoras theory is specifically used to find a missing side of a right angled triangle, not any other triangle. So if you look at the board here, this is an example of a right angle triangle. How do I know this is a right angle triangle? You can see there are three angles, this, this, and this. But this happens to be what? Right angle. This is a symbol for right angle. Remember I told you then back in school? This is the symbol for right angle, and that means 90 degrees. So one of the three angles is right angle. That makes it a right angled triangle. It can also come in this form. You can see this other one. The right angle is on this side. Right angle is formed by what? Vertical and horizontal line meeting called perpendicular line. So this is a right angle triangle, this is another right angle triangle. So we only use Pythagoras theory when one of these sides is missing or when one of these sides is not known. That is when we use Pythagoras theorem. So I repeat, it's a formula used to find a missing side of a right angle triangle. One of the sides of a right angled triangle. Alright, the next thing we need to do is to identify the sides of this right angle triangle all the sides so i would like to start with the first one which is the longest side now how do you know the longest side of a right angle triangle the longest side is a slant side that can actually help you to identify it number two the longest side is a side that is opposite the right angle this is the right angle right so the side that is facing it is the ra is the what longest side the side that is facing this right angle is the longest side. So we call that side what? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. That's the longest side of the three sides of the right angle triangle. Don't forget, I've told you two things that can help you identify the longest side, the hypotenuse. The first one is what? Is the slant side, the slanting side. The longest side is the slanting side. And as well, it is the side that is opposite the right angle, the 90 degrees. Okay? So, the other sides, one of them can be what called opposite, and the last one can be called what adjacent. So, I repeat, the three sides of the right angle triangle, the longest side is what? The side that is slant, or the side that is opposite the right angle, and it's called what? Hypotenuse. This other side is opposite, and this is adjacent. This as well can be your adjacent and opposite for your level now. When you get to secondary school, you will know the one that is specifically opposite or adjacent. Just know that the longer side is the slant side and it is what? Hypotenuse. Why others are opposite and what? Adjacent. The same thing goes for this. Now, for this type of triangle now, the hypotenuse will be here. Okay? Why this will be opposite or what? Adjacent. Because this is a side that is slant and this is a side that is facing what? The right angle. So, this now will help us go to the formula we're actually talking about here. All right, we start with what the formula we're talking about now. So the short form of hypotenuse, I call it what? HYP. The short form of opposite, I call it what? OPP. And the short form of adjacent, I call it what? ADG. Now, because this is the longest side, 
So in Pythagoras theorem, we assume that this one is what addition of these other two sides. Hypotenuse. Now, for example, if you have to find hypotenuse, which is one of the sides, so what do you say? We say this is the first one, and this first one is to find hypotenuse. You see, hypotenuse squared. We are squaring. Please take note of that square. Will be equals to what? Adjacent squared plus opposite squared. You can see that I'm adding the other two sides together because I want to get the longest side. So the longest side now will take you to add the two what shorter sides together. So for me to find hypotenuse, which is one of the sides of a right angle triangle, I will say what? Hypotenuse squared, the square very important, equals to what? Adjacent squared plus opposite squared. I am adding because I'm finding the longest side. Now, the second one is to find adjacent. When you want to find adjacent, remember adjacent is one of the shorter side, right? So you see adjacent square equals to what? Hypotenuse square, which is the longest side. Now, minus the third one, which is what? Opposite squared. Why am I subtracting? Because I'm getting one of the shorter side. So I need to take the second shorter side away from the longest side. That will help me to get what? Adjacent squared. And finally, the third side, if I'm to find the third side, which is the opposite, what do I use? I will say what? Being a shorter side, I will still subtract. Opposite square equals to what? The longest side, which is hypotenuse squared, minus what? Adjacent squared. So let me quickly run through what I've said. We have three different formula here on the Pythagoras theorem. So if I'm looking for hypotenuse, which is the longest side, I will find what? The sum of the square of the other two sides. Remember, they are all squared. It will now be hypotenuse squared equals to adjacent squared plus opposite squared. That is for the longer side. But if I'm to find adjacent, which is one of the shorter sides, I will subtract. Remember, I will still square my three sides. And the last one is opposite, which is also a shorter side. I will still subtract. And I will square all the sides given. Okay, let's apply the formula to some examples. I can see on the board, find the missing side in the following shapes. Now, looking at this shape on the board, it is a right angle triangle. Okay? It's a triangle that has 90 degrees as one of its angles. We have to find the missing side. Now, a triangle has three sides. This side, this, and this. Two sides are given, and we have to find the missing side. Now, the first thing you do is identify the missing side. What is that missing side? Now, looking at it here, I told you already that the slant side is the longest side, which is called hypotenuse. So, this is our hypotenuse. We don't know it. So, we regard it as what? X. These are what? Opposite. We know it as 5 centimeters. And this is what? Our adjacent. So, what we are looking for indirectly is what? Hypotenuse. So, what's the formula for hypotenuse? Remember, it's the longest side. And that is the only side, that's the only time we add, isn't it? So what do you say? Hypotenuse squared equals to what? Adjacent squared plus what? Opposite squared. Now it is time for us to substitute. Whatever you say hypotenuse, you put x. Whatever you say adjacent, you put 12. Whatever you say opposite, you put 5. So what do we say? x squared equals to what? Adjacent is 12. 12 squared plus what? Opposite is 5. 5 squared. Alright, let's move on. x squared gives you what? What is 12 squared? That's 12 times 12. 144 plus 5 squared, which is what? 25. So what do you say? s squared equals to what? What would this give you? This gives us 169. But don't forget we're looking for x, which is hypotenuse, not x squared. So we need to find a way to move the square away. Remember in our algebra, when the square crosses the bridge, which is equal to sine, it becomes the opposite, which is square root, isn't it? So what do you now have? X now becomes what? Square root of 169. I'm very sure you are still, you can still remember this. So what square root of 169? That's what? 13 centimeters. So therefore, this side is 13 centimeters. That is our hypotenuse. So for this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is what? 13 centimeters. Example 2. We have to find the missing side in this shape as well. This is another right-angled triangle. As you can see, the right angle is there. So we have to find the missing side. So the next thing is to label the sides, okay? I told you the slant side here is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. Hypotenuse. This is what? Our opposite. We know it as 3 meters. 
that this is what our adjacent it is not known this is the side we have to find so you put x there so hypotenuse is five meters opposite is three meters adjacent we do not know so we have to find it from our formula don't forget adjacent is one of the shorter sides so we subtract you take away the other shorter side from the longest side so how do you get adjacent remember adjacent square equals to what from our formula hypotenuse squared minus opposite squared so let's substitute now whenever you see adjacent you put x hypotenuse 5 meters opposite 3 meters so what do we do x squared equals to what hypotenuse 5 meters that's 5 squared minus opposite which is 3 squared so what do you have x squared equals to what 25 minus 3 squared is 9 so what will x squared give you x squared equals to 16 so don't forget we are looking for x not x squared so what do you have happen the square crosses and it becomes square root so you have x equals to square root of 16 therefore x equals to what 4 the square root of 16 is 4 and that gives you 4 meters take note of the unit other sides are given in meters, so my answer should be in meters. So this adjacent or the missing side is what? 4 meters. Alright, let's take another example. This is another right angled triangle on the border. We have to find the missing side. You can see that out of the three sides, two sides are given. This side is given, this side is given. Now we have to find this side. So let's label our side. The first thing you should do is what? Label your longest side, which is the hypotenuse. This side, which is opposite the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. And it is given as 26 centimeters. This side is our what? Opposite. It is not given, so we label it as x. And this is our what? Adjacent. And it's given as 24 centimeters. So we have to find the opposite, which is one of the shorter sides. Remember the formula for shorter side. We subtract the other shorter side from the longer side. So what's the formula for opposite? Opposite squared equals to what? Hypotenuse squared minus adjacent squared so let's substitute what's our opposite x so x squared equals to what hypotenuse which is 26 26 squared minus or adjacent which is 24 24 squared so what do you have x squared equals to what is 26 squared that is 676 minus what is 24 squared that is 576 all right so x squared equals to 676 minus 576 will give you what 100 remember we have to find what x not x squared so what happens the square crosses the bridge to become square root so what do you have x equals to square root of 100 therefore what is x what square root of 100 that's 10 so x equals to 10 centimeters so this side the opposite for this right angle triangle is 10 centimeters in length all right, Sardonyx, we have come to the end of this morning's mathematics class. Like I will always tell you, copy your note and watch the video for explanation. You get your classwork and the homework on their different segments on the portal. See you some other time. Bye.